you know, two of them successfully argued they should be seen as workers and entitled to the minimum wage and holiday pay. We first broke the news of Uber drivers planning to take the company to court back in 2015. Here's a clip from Jim Reed's original report. James Farrer has been an Uber driver for almost a year. Like all the others, he's self-employed. Now he's part of a group taking legal action against the company in what could be a landmark case. The flexibility is really great. Um, you know, you can switch on the app and work whenever you want. Um, you can stop whenever you want and go home. Uh, the only problem is, is that um, if you're not working, you're not earning. And the earnings are so much lower uh, than I expected uh, and it's really starting to bite now. And you're noticing it change are you? Is, is it more difficult to make money now in your mind than it was six months ago? Most, ago? most definitely, most definitely. The effect is is that look you know there's a certain amount of money you need to earn each day and you just have to stay out longer and longer until you earn it. And of course last week Transport for London controversially decided not to renew Uber's license to operate in the capital a decision which was not related to this morning's case. TfL said last week Uber was not a fit and proper private car hire operator, listing four main areas of concern, including its approach to reporting criminal offences and carrying out background checks on drivers. Uber's chief executive has since apologised for the taxi company's mistakes in London and promised to change. London Mayor Sadiq Khan has accused them of behaving in an aggressive manner. This is what he told us last year about Uber when our political guru Norman Smith interviewed him in the back of a black cab. What are you? Are you a, an, an Uber man or a, a black cab man? I'm both an Uber and a black cab man. Do you go along with um, you know, some of the ideas to curb Uber, for example, forcing them to wait five minutes? I mean, specifically with Uber, there's a view amongst black cabbies they have an unfair advantage. So do you think if you were mayor, you would look to do something to curb the advantages that Uber have. I'm not sure if waiting for five minutes works. The important thing is to make sure we level the playing field. So, for example, just think about what you know you've got to go through as a black cab driver before you can drive a black cab. You know, the vehicles are so expensive; they're all disabled friendly. Uh, the criminal checks, the knowledge you've got to do, rather than levelling down your high standards, let's, let's level up the private hire vehicle standards. So, for example. Uh, basic knowledge, speak in English, doing the security checks. How does that... So, what next for Uber? Let's talk to James Farrer then, one of the Uber drivers who brought the employment tribunal case and who you saw briefly in James, uh, Jim's film. Emma, who's an Uber driver here in London, we're not, she's asked us not to use her surname. Also with us, Charlie Edmonds and Millie Sansoy, who both use the app um, Express. So let's talk to James then. Uh, James, you won the tribunal last year. How worried are you about Uber's appeal? I'm not worried at all. Um, I think our case is absolutely rock solid. It's interesting, you know, um, in 2014, Uber told the London Assembly that it was a different minicab uh, organisation, that it was a happy, shiny, sharing economy uh, type of um, operator, and that the rest of the industry was brutally exploited. And as I understand the argument today they're making, is that they're just like the rest of the uh, minicab trade. So I guess they're acknowledging finally that they're brutally exploitative. So we're here to get the law enforced. It's a shame that we have to do it, that the government isn't doing it, but we will see the law enforced and we've got a rock solid case. My only and frustration though is that we can't get access to our rights while Uber exhausts its appeal. And that's taking such a long time and it's, it's more time than people can afford. Emma, you're a fellow Uber driver. What do you say to James? Um, well, I, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed that there are people sort of fighting for the right to have sick pay um, and holiday pay. I, I really enjoy, along with my other female Uber drivers, we really enjoy the flexibility. It gives much more opportunity to women to drive and there's a big campaign to get as many women drivers on Uber as possible. Um, yeah, we, we, I, I enjoy being self-employed. I, like, I wouldn't have been able to help out at Grenfell all these weeks had I not been with flexible working conditions. Um, I'm not an employee. I'm a self-employed person who chooses to use the Uber platform. James, what do you say to Emma briefly? Well, um, first of all, we're not fighting for a new right. Uh, all we've asked the court to do is to look at the situation as it actually is. And they've concluded, in looking at the situation, that lawfully we have worker rights. It's 
something that I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the law to be enforced as it actually is. Now, in terms of flexibility versus fairness, it's a false choice. You know, we're entitled to have both flexibility and fairness, and I, I don't uh, accept that there's a, there's a choice between the two. And finally, we're not asking to be employees. We are self-employed, but we're self-employed in such a situation that uh, we are vulnerable exploitation and we're entitled to the minimum wage and holiday day pay protection. Now the thing with holiday pay is so important for low earners because if you can't afford to stop working that becomes a real tragedy personally but also it becomes a safety risk because drivers are working 80, 90, 100 hours a week. Okay well Emma is shaking her head in disagreement with what you're saying well, James. Yeah I, I mean I, I earn quite well to be honest. Um, I don't work stupid hours um, I take a break after two or three trips just to stretch my legs. I, I'm very sensible about it because I have a responsibility to take care of the safety of my passengers. Um, if, if Why I would you not want sick pay if you were ill? Because I've never had sick pay as a self-employed person. It, it, you know, if I need to take a day off, I'll take a day off. Okay. Um, let, let me bring in Charlie and Millie then. Um, Charlie, are you, are you happy to, you, to take Uber cars even though they're not working under Transport for London regulations? Uh, up, until, you know, up until this weekend, I thought they were working under the regulations. Mm. And up until then, I was, I was very happy to take them. Uh, I think that Uber have an opportunity now to step up. I mean, the CEO has apologised for mistakes they've made without really elaborating on what those mistakes are. I, I can give you some information. I mean, the Metropolitan Police wrote to TfL earlier this year uh, about a number of uh, alleged offences committed by Uber drivers. One involved uh, allegedly pulling a gun. Two were alleged sexual assaults, which are coming to court in the future, and Uber did not inform the police about any of those, and that's the issue. Right, so I think that, I absolutely think that Uber should go by the same regulations that any other taxi firm goes by, and I think they have an opportunity now to step up and not just merely comply with the sort of minimum requirements. They can step up and say, OK, here, here is our policy. This is the training we're giving our drivers on how to, how to behave and how to treat women, not just, not just don't assault people. No one needs to be told that, but mm. how to make sure that, you're, how, that your users are comfortable. OK, what about yourself, Millie, as an Uber user? Um, I'm really comfortable using Uber. I always have been. I think I always will be. Um, I actually... One of the USPs for me is that I've got all of the driver's details on my phone um, and then after my trip I've got an actual map, you know, detailing which route was taken, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, so that if something does happen, mm. I've got absolutely every detail, whereas I feel like with black cabs you don't have the same accountability. Yeah. I've got all the information I need if something bad was to happen, to go to the police and file a complaint. But it would be better if something bad didn't happen, and that's another of TfL's issues. They're not, Uber are not, they say, doing the proper background checks on their drivers. Oh, that's... I've never had a problem with an Uber driver that I've, you know, been with, so okay. Emma, as far want, as... I, Emma wants as to come in here as, as an Uber driver. Yeah, um, this background check, uh, you know, I, I've had background checks, enhanced background checks for other work I've done, you know, for all my working life, mm. or, you know, as long as they've been CRB, then DBS. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had an enhanced DBS check done, which uh, TfL accepted. Um, I've now been one of these 13,000 people given a letter saying I have to do it again for another £68 uh, using their people, which they didn't have in place initially. So, you know, I've, I've followed every rule. Um, I, you, you have, but Uber haven't, according well, to TfL. But I don't know what those rules are that, that Uber haven't followed. I really, really don't. Mm. And, you know, this... this Does it worry you that, that Uber didn't report these drivers and their alleged sexual assaults well, to the police? Well, that's not my experience of Uber. When, whenever I've this had... Is, sure, no, I'm sure it's not. But this is what the Metropolitan Police is saying. OK, so it what I don't nice. understand is there's also data that's come out to say that Uber have followed 10... They've had 10 compliance checks by TfL right up until this last April mm. that they passed. Then suddenly there's all these other issues that haven't been checked. Well, I don't understand why T TfL not continued to do those checks because up until April they had passed all the compliance checks. So James, do you want to come back in here? I'm not understanding. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree with Millie. The background checks, the DBS is the medical certification. If there's problems there, that is Transport for London's problem. Drivers 
get those certifications as a prerequisite for getting their license from TfL before they can work for Uber. So if there's a failure in this process, it's down to Transport for London. Now, last year, Transport for London was meeting with Uber to accelerate the process of onboarding. We've doubled the number of minicab drivers yeah. in London, so I think the wheels have fallen off. Okay. Now, on the sex okay. attacks, this is a tragedy. We've, we've, um, we've asked to engage with Transport for London Metropolitan Police on that for over a year. Uh, and they've declined to do so. So it's a tragedy that that's happened. But we also have 50% of mini cab drivers are attacked on the job. And, you know, I was attacked on the job and Uber 10 weeks before they would cooperate with the police to identify my attacker. So Uber have some form there, I think. Okay. Uh, thank you. We're going to leave it there. Thank you very thank much, you. all of you, for coming thank on you. the programme. Thank you. Thank you. News and Sport in a moment. Before that, the latest weather. Here's Simon. Hello. Hello, Victoria. Good morning, everyone. Okay.